Repair University. Now we've gotten out of the shop and out into the field, which may look like a little bit more of a realistic estimating experience for some of you and the guys, especially some of you insurance adjusters that are out there every day in the salvage yards. Now we're going to talk about estimating airbag damage. Now one of the things that we see a lot is when the airbag is deployed, that we have a lot of estimators that replace the unit that's deployed, maybe look for a little bit in the head notes, but man, when you do that, you're missing so many options. And when you want to know exactly what it takes to do an airbag, well, I go to Airbag Solutions and Doug Gann. So, Doug, thanks for joining me today. Thank you, Chris. I appreciate you taking the time. Here. Thanks for having us. Now, there's so many problems that can happen when we maybe just rely on an estimating database for our airbags. What are some of those? I agree. Um, what's going on is that the appraisers don't know what to write, and they don't have the tools to write exactly what the OEMs all require. Each of the OEMs have a list of requirements that they produce in their um, repair manuals and their TSBs. And these estimating systems just can't keep up. And that's what we do, is we produce all that information. But the appraisers, as you say, just come in, they see with a, a deployed bag, yeah. they'll start clicking things in the database that's on the restraints page, and they'll call it a day and say, well, we'll just send it to the dealer at the end. Well, they just created a supplement. And Body Shop Business just did a, a recent survey. 60 to 70% of estimates have a supplement. And that can be avoided right here at the appraisal, at the damage appraisal site with the proper information, the proper tools, and taking the extra 10 minutes that it needs to do the job properly. Now I get a lot of estimators tell me, well, Kristen, I've got the information. I'm I've got the head notes. I've got maybe the mm -hmm. airbag matrix that, that came out, you know, a couple of years ago or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I got what I need. I, I know that if the seatbelt's deployed, I need, a, I need to, or if the airbag's deployed, I need to put a seatbelt on there. But what other things are not in the matrix, are not in those head notes that are common items that we're just missing completely? Well, we use this car as an example. This is an 07 Mercedes CLK, and Mercedes has a requirement. The very first step you're supposed to do when you do an appraisal is to hook up a scan tool and run the codes, find out what sensors are bad. Uh, the control unit doesn't need replacing unless it's the third time, and you won't know that without a scan tool. You don't want to find that out at the end of the job after you've got $15,000 into the car, you take it to the dealer, and they say, well, you need another $1,800 control unit. That's not the time to find out. Right. So those are the kinds of things. Um, you talk about a seat belt being deployed. Now this has um, pretensioners both in the front and the rear. And if you don't know that, you're not going to write them. So what you need to do is be prepared when you come out to the car. Um, there are five steps to writing a good estimate for the body shops and the appraisers. The first step is to know the vehicle you're walking out to. Do the research before you come out. Look it up in Airbag Solutions if you have access to the OEM site. Look it up and do the research on the OEM site. Find out what the procedure is, what the components are. The second step is to identify the information source. So in the future when someone comes to you and says, hey, well, how come you put a steering column in that car? That's not required. Well, back then it was, and you've got to print out to prove it because that's what you looked up and that's what you found. Third step is to go out to the vehicle, look it over, write down everything that you see, check it off on your checklist. Fourth thing is to scan the vehicle. Uh, Mercedes requires that first, but uh, you want to do that on every vehicle with a deployment. Um, Chrysler is another example that if you don't scan it, you won't know what it needs. Sensors are not required unless they're damaged, and you don't know if they're damaged unless they're an electronic problem. Now, I've often gone back, you know, I think a lot of shops think that the scanning is something that's done when it's replaced. And if I'm not going to do the replacement in-house, well, I don't need the scanner. I'm just going to leave that to the dealership. And sometimes that can cause a four to $5,000 supplement that That's you're right. getting on the Friday that you thought the car was going to deliver. That's right. You know, you talk about surprises. Um, if you don't scan the vehicle first, um, you're, not, you're not going to know what you're up against. That's just going in blind, and that's, that doesn't make good sense. Some of the other things you want to do is to tear it down and find these little squib connectors that may be melted. Uh, very often a clock spring will be melted and you won't know it until you take the airbag off. So you want to be able to do tear down just as you would with a front bumper or a door skin to find out what the damage inside is. You want to have access to all the components. You pull down a curtain airbag on a, on a hard top and find a squib connector melted, you're going to need a body harness. 
that could be a four to five thousand dollar supplement that you don't need to worry about after you've got the car finished. Now one of the other misconceptions I run into frequently is that they think that I only need to worry about airbag information or supplemental restraint systems if I've had a deployment. And there's a lot of manufacturers now that have rules and regulations that say even if you've just had an incident, deployment or not, there are a few things that have to be done. That's right. And your company covers all of that information as well. We do. We have um, all the procedures. In fact, we've created a brand new checklist for you for the body appraisers. It's a very simple online checklist that they can either print out or they can go back to their terminal and do it online that helps you determine um, things like who was sitting in the car at the time of the accident because many of the car makers require seat belts to be replaced if there was an occupant. So if you don't know if there's an occupant, then you're not going to know to change that seat belt system and it's going to be off the estimate and require a supplement. Um, things like a steering column, you can't tell if it's deployed, but the scan tool can. So our checklist goes through all of that. Um, occupant classifications has to be reset. Toyota, for example, on any vehicle that's been in an accident, you need to recalibrate the passenger seat for occupant classification. That's just a requirement. And without knowing what each car requires, you're not going to be able to write a proper estimate and you're guaranteeing a supplement. And that's a lot of information that I know is not in the head notes on the cars. No, no now, it's not. Now, to get a copy of the checklist, because I think that would be a great thing to have in my estimating, where would they go to get yeah, a copy of Yeah, the checklist of that? is free and you can get it on our website. Um, we did a, a class for Verifax as well and they have it on their website in their Verifax Academy. But airbagsolutions.com has it right on the banner. Uh, you just click on the banner, it'll take you to a page and you can download the, the free uh, checklist or you mm -hmm. can work online with it anytime you want. There's no cost to that. But working in conjunction with the checklist is the Airbag Solutions database. And that's where the meat of the information is. That's what gives you all the different pictures and shows you what it needs. This particular car has two pretensioners and you need to know that. Um, it requires a steering wheel and a steering column. You're not going to know that by looking at it. And unless you've got time to scour the Mercedes uh, manuals, you're not going to be able to read that either. Yeah. Um, the fifth step in the, in the um, estimating process would be completing the checklist. And if you go through, the, it's three simple pages, and if you go through all the steps on the checklist, it'll take you 10 minutes, but you will have covered every aspect of a restraint system, and you will know that you've written the estimate properly. Well, you know, Doug, as an estimator, this is something that I always struggled with. And then when I mm -hmm. got into a manager role, it was something that I was always having to deal with complaints on. So I've inspected the car, looked at it, kind of know what I think it needs. But what I'm going to do is let you inspect the car. I want you to go through your process, your checklist, how you would do it. We're going to get back together at the end, and we're going to see if we were both right or if I've got something to learn from you. All right. That sounds good. <laughs> All right. So a 2007 Mercedes CLK has come into the shop with some damage to it, front damage front airbag is deployed. As I mentioned before, there are five steps to writing a good restraint system estimate. The first step is to research your vehicle before you go out to it. You want to understand what components are involved, which ones need to be replaced, which ones need to be inspected, how to reset the system, and what Mercedes requires. So according to the OEM, and Airbag Solutions has that printed, the first thing Mercedes requires for restraint deployment is to scan the system find out what components are failed and which ones need replacement. Some of this is not visual, it's all electronic and you won't be able to see the damage but the computer will tell you. So that's what we're going to do is go through the, that step and the remaining four to show you how to write a good restraint system estimate. We've hooked up the scanner, we've selected the vehicle and now we're going to start reading the fault codes. This vehicle was a front end crash and it indicates a front deployment from the driver's airbag. It also indicates there's a code set in the airbag computer, the control module. It shows deployed front seat belt and both rear seat belt pretensioners. So what we're going to do is record that information on our restraint systems checklist. Once you've determined who's in the vehicle, how the accident happened, you're on to the second page and you want to include all the items that are in the scanner. You want to mark down the scan codes and you want to indicate everything the scanner has displayed. The other thing it shows is the occupant classification system on the passenger side needs to be recalibrated. So with all those codes we mark those down on our uh, restraint system service checklist. The second thing we want to do is look in our database, Airbag Solutions or the OEM, and find out what components this vehicle has. 
On this particular one, the driver's airbag is required. When the bag deploys, it's also going to need a steering wheel. In addition, it's going to need a steering column. Since the passenger bag did not go off, the dashboard and passenger bag are not required. And the control unit needs to be cleared, according to the OEM. The clock spring may be melted, and it's, not, it's only required if it is. So what we're going to want to do is have a tech come out, remove the airbag, and check the squib connectors for the driver's airbag. If those connectors are melted, then we're going to want to change the clock spring. The final step in looking at your checklist is to understand how to reset the system. This, once again, is going to require a scan tool that reads Mercedes and is capable of resetting the system. Most of your scan tools for four or $500 will not be able to do that on a Mercedes. So you're going to need to get into something a little more expensive and with a little more software. Otherwise, you need to schedule time on your estimate to take the car to the dealer to have that done. So once you've finished the step of identifying all the components in the vehicle, you enter them all into your checklist, and now you have a complete estimate. Let's check back with Kristen and see what she's up to. So we're back at the car. Now Doug's done his inspection and gone through the checklist. Now don't forget you can get that checklist on their website. Go visit it, download it. Now I've done my inspection and it's time to compare and I'm almost a little scared to do this. So I went through my estimating system mm -hmm. and I know that I need this, the airbag. I need the clock spring for that airbag. Um, I need to replace a pretensioner in the seat belt. And then I've allowed them about a half an hour to go ahead and reset the system after it goes over and the airbag gets installed. Doug, how'd I do? Okay, well that's pretty typical. That's what we find when we see these estimates. Um, you got about one-third of what the car needs. Yes, it needs the airbag. No, it does not need the clock spring until we identify a melted connector. That's not required. But you missed the steering wheel. You missed the steering column. You included a seatbelt pretensioner. But it has both front and rear seatbelt pretensioners. And you allowed a half an hour time to reset the control unit. Um, I'm not sure what the body labor rate is in this area, but I know Mercedes is not going to give you a reset for a half an hour time. They're going to charge you at least an hour and that's going to be at Mercedes labor rate if the control unit needs resetting um, or it needs to be replaced. You don't know because you didn't scan it. You're going to put your airbag in, you're going to put your seatbelt in, the light's going to be on, you're going to ship it to the dealer. They're going to come back at you with about a $4,800 supplement for the steering wheel, the steering column, the seatbelt pretensioners that you missed in the back seat, a reset on the control unit. That's a big supplement to be getting kind of late stage in the repair process because this is usually my last thing before delivery oh, yeah. and I'm hoping for the dealership to send it back to give it to the customer. Yeah. I think if one of my adjusters had showed up with a supplement like that, I might have been a little upset with them. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I guess I made a typical mistake by using the estimating mm -hmm. system for my, my total information source. God, what are some other common mistakes that adjusters and estimators within repair facilities make when they're doing airbag restraint systems? Well, they do it either one of two ways. The way you just did it, they write what they see and hope they're right or they click everything that's restraint related in their database and hope they got it right. And neither one of those things are correct. You need to have a reliable source that tells you exactly what to replace. Um, side impacts, a lot of these cars are going to pressure sensors in the doors. Now a pressure sensor is different than an impact sensor in that it requires the door be sealed. When you rip off the door panel to change the, the window motor and you tear that plastic open to get to those bolts, You've just ruined that seal, and that pressure sensor is not going to work. And these appraisers don't understand how critical it is that even just a plastic seal water barrier is critical to an airbag restraint system deployment. And they need to know those things. So if I'm doing like a door scan on a car that mm -hmm. had no airbag deployment, there's right. no code, there's no nothing, but just simply by doing the, the door scan, I may have an airbag issue. Yeah, the bag may not deploy properly on a side impact, and you could be held liable if it was traced out to you. And all that information about side impacts and the seals, well, that's all on airbagsolutions.com. That's all on airbag solutions. yep. There's peripheral damage, things like a broken cruise control switch, as we mentioned earlier, might be hidden by a bag that's just laying against it. You're not going to know that till the day you deliver the car. And that's going to take another two days for a supplement and the parts to come through. And that doesn't help your CSI. <laughs> not at all. Well, it's like anything when you're estimating a car. Having the right information always gives you the right estimate up front. And that's what's critical when it not only just delivering the car on time and meeting the repair demands of your DRPs or of your manager if you're an adjuster, but that's just pure customer service when we can repair the car right the first time and on time every time. So be sure and go visit airbagsolutions.com's website. Check out the program. It's what I use now when I estimate and get all my information and a lot of shops that I know are using it as well. And if you want more information on training and inspecting with airbags, well, you can always visit the Verifax Academy on the Verifax Auto website. 
and they've got some training that Airbag Solutions has put together for them as well. And you can get some more in-depth training on estimating airbags and restraint systems. Stay tuned to Repair University, where we're coming back with more estimating education.